The next issue is DVT. DVT, if it's not taken care of, can result in massive uh, embolism and later on stroke. So this is how the patient will develop, uh, look like. And this is most common in the acute and subacute phase, but can occur any time. So usually it is said that you take steps from, uh, from uh, after the patient's vitals are stabilized, start with the ankle pumps, you know, pneumatic compression. You can start all these things from uh, in the ward itself. Now, the most common cause is thought to be long-term immobility because it leads to venous stasis and, uh, you know, cooling of the blood. So that's why the, uh, this is thought to be the most common cause. And the other risk factors are age, obesity, lower limb fractures, pregnancy, previous history of DVT. Now, what symptoms will the patient, patient present with? Patient will have severe pain. There can be swelling, tenderness, or skin discoloration, and increased warmth. So as we said, this can lead to pulmonary embolism. So this is again very important. Preventive measures are usually anticoagulants, low molecular weight heparins are given, then uh, wearing compression stockinets. So at, uh, uh, at ward level, if the PT INR is uh, normal, then we can uh, initially, we can start with the compression stockings and ankle toe pumps can be given and a compression uh, stocking, compression stocknet can be used initially just to prevent the, as a preventive measure for DVT. If the patient has risk factors then. Once the uh, once you suspect that there is a, risk, a high risk factor, then you can start with the anticoagulants also. Now next is next important complication is orthostatic hypotension. This patient will invariably develop because the patient lies on the bed for a long time, and we are talking about the chronic spinal cord injury patient. So the patient once he starts uh, after a long time, if he is bedridden, if you are asking him to sit or making him sit with the help of other attenders then the patient develops giddiness. It is defined as, you know, decrease in the systolic or systolic blood pressure by 20 mm or diastolic by 10 mm of uh, blood pressure. So when a person moves from lying to standing or sitting position, he develops this, a sudden giddiness, something like this. So there's a sudden drop in blood pressure, as we said, 20 by 10, that it might drop like that. Then uh, fatigue, patient might complain say of fatigue, lightheadedness, dizziness, blurred vision, muscle weakness, and temporary loss of consciousness during that particular period of time. So how do you manage that? You, you have some, you know, uh, non-pharmacological measures. Like, you should avoid any sudden head up postural change, especially on waking. Uh, do not uh, promote recumbency, means lying down position. Straining during micturition defecation is not allowed. High environmental temperature, including hot baths, should not be given. So extremes of temperature should not be given. Drugs with vasodepressive properties should be noted. So avoid all these things. Now, what do you introduce? So during rehabilitation, you introduce a head up tilt during sleep, give a high salt intake, adopt different positions. So basically what we mean is like you do the change of posture, you know, that takes care of so many things. Change of posture uh, keeps the orthostatic hypotension at bay. Then it also it prevents the pressure sores. So, so many things it takes care, care of. And uh, what you can do is you can put elastic stockinets that will take care of uh, prevention of DVT as well as keep on the, prevent the blood pooling from occurring. And thigh cuffs can be used, abdominal binders can be used or water ingestion. You know, increase, increase water uh, ingestion. Now, what drugs are used? Suppose this is resilient. It is not managed by all these non-pharmacological measures. So you can use some medicines like midotrin is the most commonly used. It's an alpha-1 adrenergic receptor agonist. It is used in the dose of 2.5 to 10 mg BD or TID. But just note that, you know, a uh, higher dose might also lead to supine hyper hypertension and piloerections and pruritus can occur. So this is an FDA approved for supine hypertension. Okay, next is fludrocortisone can also be used at a dose of 0.1 to 0.4 mg daily. But side effects are hypokalemia and edema. 